I want you to hit me as hard as you can. And here we go. With the recent return of the Dark Knight to the big screen in The Batman, what better time to reassess two incarnations of Batman's most formidable nemesis, the Joker. The character has been an iconic figure, not only in the comics, but across various platforms, including the popular 1960s TV show with Cesar Romero playing the role, and in graphic novels, cartoons, and of course on the silver screen. It's hard to imagine, but the character of the Joker was originally planned to be killed off during his initial appearance in the comic book series in 1940. However, editorial intervention spared him, and he has since endured many incarnations and continues to be Batman's greatest arch enemy. The Clown Prince of Crime is a character so embedded in the minds of fans that everyone has an opinion on how he should be portrayed, for better or worse. Jack Nicholson's acting legacy is immense, and it was so even before he donned the fake smile and zany antics of the Joker. With two Oscars under his belt, Nicholson had already established himself as an iconic performer with roles in Easy Rider, Chinatown, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, The Shining. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains. Terms of Endearment and The Witches of Eastwick, just to name a few. So his casting as the Joker in Tim Burton's 1989 Batman movie was met with intrigue. Could someone of his stature bring a suitably unhinged persona to the clown prince of crime? On the other hand, Heath Ledger had shown huge potential before his tragic and untimely death in 2008 from an accidental prescription drug overdose. The Australian actor started his career in the long running, and by that I mean, I think it's still going, home and away, down under, before 10 Things I Hate About You catapulted him onto the global stage. Can't take my eyes off of you. Other very notable roles included A Knight's Tale, Monsters Ball, The Four Feathers, The Lords of Dogtown, and many more before his first truly career-defining moment and Oscar-nominated role opposite Jake Gyllenhaal in Brokeback Mountain. While both actors brought their own strengths to the role, which of these legends was able to most successfully take on arguably pop culture's greatest villain ever? Jack Nicholson has a real penchant for playing Mad Men on screen, and Heath Ledger's legacy prior to playing the Joker was slightly more grounded. So slap on the chalk wet makeup and try not to fall into a vat of toxic chemicals, because you know what it's time for... Face Off. Disclaimer, no actual science was used to determine the outcome of Face Off. Your results may vary. Please do not consume Face Off if you are allergic to conjecture, opinion, or general nonsense. When we first meet Jack Nicholson's pre-Joker alias, Jack Napier, he is part of the Gotham City Mafia, rising up the ranks and eventually becoming the right-hand man of crime boss Carl Grissom, played by the late great Jack Palance. Napier is having an affair with Grissom's lady, Alicia, played by the iconic model, Jerry Hall, and when Grissom finds out about the tryst, he sends Napier to his apparent demise at Axis Chemicals, only for the plan to go south when both Commissioner Gordon and Batman intervene with Cape Crusader, causing Napier to fall into a vat of toxic waste, thus giving him the trademark white face, red lips, and green hair. A botched attempt at plastic surgery leaves him with a permanent grin, and Napier fully embraces his new persona, calling himself Joker and murdering Grissom in order to take over the mob boss's empire. It's a very cool transformation that provides an interesting and arresting arc for the character, with an obvious grudge against Batman, and establishes his diabolical plan to overthrow Gotham. There's even a twist in Tim Burton's Batman as it's revealed that Jack Napier killed Bruce's parents and thus indirectly created Batman before the latter ever created the Joker. It's an interesting way to display the idea of fate that forever entwines these two characters. In The Dark Knight, we don't exactly see how Heath Ledger became the Joker, but this does not diminish the introduction of the character in the slightest. In the IMAX shot prologue, we see a bank heist that is perfectly orchestrated by the Joker, with him tricking his fellow goons into murdering each other for a bigger share of the loot until only he remains with the money. It's a sequence shot with skill and gravitas that waits until the climax of the heist to fully reveal the Joker himself, with his identity a mystery up to that point. While Tim Burton gradually orchestrated the fall of Jack Napier and subsequent rise of the Joker in Batman 1989, Nolan introduces the Joker as an almost complete character with seemingly only chaos and destruction as his key motive. The idea of bringing the Joker out from nowhere into the mosh pit of villainy that is Gotham is genius while Nicholson's take on the character is more akin to the source material. Wait till they get a load of me. 
Before we continue, we'd like to thank you all for watching Face Off. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and click on the bell so you can be notified every time a new video goes live. Now, back to the show. When he first appeared in Batman No. 1 back in 1940, the Clown Prince of Crime was introduced as an anarchist who causes chaos around Gotham, pulling off heists and leaving his first victim, socialite Henry Claridge, with a smile on his face. His face was covered with white makeup, crimson red lips, and bright green hair, a signature look that would remain the signature look of the character. Tim Burton fully embraced this for his vision of the Joker, with Jack Nicholson sporting a getup that closely resembled the classic iteration. Pale white face, check. Crimson red lips, check. Bright green hair, triple check. This blesses purple suit complete with a colorful orange or green shirt rounded off, which is largely considered the definitive look for the villain. While we got some idea of Joker's backstory in Batman 1989, it is mostly left to the audience's imagination in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. The only time we glean any information about his past is when Ledger's villain discusses how he got his scars. He tells Maggie Gyllenhaal's Rachel Dawes that he did it to cheer up his wife after she was disfigured by loan sharks. However, in another similar scene, Ledger's Joker gives us a different account of his scars, this time due to an abusive father. Nolan wanted the character's origins to remain a mystery so that when he was unleashed during the opening bank heist, he was already more or less formed and ready to cause mayhem. This was reflected in his look for the character that was more dirty and realistic than what had come before, as though the Joker had thrown it on in front of the mirror himself. This look was certainly iconic in its own right, albeit a slight departure from the traditional getup. Ledger's Joker brought a new, exciting, dark and gritty take to the character which served the world in which he inhabited very well, while Negason's version stuck more to the conventional look that was established in the early comics. A little fight now. I like that. In many of his roles, you could argue that Jack Nicholson is playing, well, Jack Nicholson, Jack Baby. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, as the actor always brings an incredible amount of his own intensity and persona to every role, whether it's playing unhinged within a mental institution or growling catchphrases while wielding an axe. Towards the beginning of Batman 1989, Nicholson's Napier is accused of being vain, but he and his transformative Joker is more like a narcissist with a penchant for the best things in life. He shows just how intense and deranged he is, however, by using sulfuric acid to scar the face of his mistress, Alicia, referring to the poor disfigured woman as a piece of art, and goes on to similarly repaint Gotham's art scene in kind. The Joker, however, is a character largely based upon humor, and his outlandish antics in the movie are complemented by a series of gags while being dressed in vibrant clothes, dancing along to Prince numbers, and using crazy weaponry during his crime spree. Despite this cartoonish persona, Nicholson's Joker is actually more fiendish than you may remember. Calligraphy pen to the throat, anyone? How about frying a man to a crispy death while using a hand buzzer? Or releasing a deadly Smilex toxin across Gotham? Ledger and his incarnation of the Joker bring an altogether different and more intense level of crazy to the Dark Knight. The aforementioned IMAX sequence at the start is one of the greatest introductions of a villain in perhaps all of cinema, with the character standing within the massive 70mm frame in the center of an unprepared Gotham City. This moment makes the audience sense that a malevolent spirit has been summoned to take Gotham's soul and is willing to bring anybody down with him if that is what it takes. Nolan and his writing team's decision to create a fully fledged character away from the already established iterations meant that they had carte blanche to mold the character as they wished. Heath Ledger was reportedly influenced by the Sex Pistols' Sid Vicious, and his arrival in the movie could be likened to a punk rocker diving headfirst into a bang mosh pit. His initial reveal to the Gotham mob bosses must have been a nightmare for the censors. Then it shows that he is afraid of nothing, and his maniacally unhinged and often nuanced performance is in opposition to Nicholson's more cartoonish, yet still violent take on the Joker. You can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs. <laughs> When quizzed on the debates surrounding the Joker's origins in The Dark Knight, Christopher Nolan stated that he wanted the character to appear as an absolute incarnation of evil. This statement lends itself true to initial appearance in the 1940 comic when he kills several people using his trademark Joker toxin that not only leaves them dead, but smiling maniacally like he does himself. Jack Nicholson's Joker from Batman 1989 uses the toxin as a major part of his plot to terrorize Gotham City, but he does it with more panache and style than in the past. Appearing on a TV broadcast to inform the citizens of Gotham about his plans, he then dances on a podium to the Pumping Prince Song Trust while throwing money to the crowd on his way around the city. 
Although Nicholson's Joker appears to be more of a showman, it doesn't hide the fact that he nonetheless has no boundaries, racking up a larger kill count than Ledger's Joker did, with at least 50 on-screen deaths compared to 23. Plus, he never hides his desire to see Batman dead. Although Heath Ledger's Joker is only on screen for 33 minutes of the overall 152 minute movie, this does not diminish the effect he has on the film nor the three main protagonists in Vigilante Batman, Police Lieutenant James Gordon, and District Attorney Harvey Dent. He's omnipresent in the movie and lingers like a shadow hanging over everybody involved in the narrative. Everyone! As Alfred rightly surmises in the film, Some men just want to watch the world burn. This summation of the Joker's irrational and senseless cruelty is what gives the Dark Knight such menace. Leisure's Joker also showcases an unrivaled level of manipulation during his interrogation scenes with both Batman You have nothing! Nothing to threaten me with! Nothing to do with all of your strength! And when Detective Stevens is watching over him, apparently unfazed. It's not just his clever manipulation that makes him stand out, but just take any one of his malevolent acts, killing Rachel Dawes by tricking Batman into going to the wrong location for her, planting a bomb in his goon so he can escape prison, or by giving Gotham City's citizens a chance to blow two fairies up, it's this intelligence and inscrutable evil that leaves Ledger's Joker with a more menacing persona overall. I thought my jokes were bad. He turns to me and he says, Why so serious? Why so serious indeed, Mr. Joker? I'll tell you why. You two clowns have a face off to win and we're getting super serious now. With a character so well known and beloved, it is prerequisite to deliver some quote worthy dialogue for fans to chew on, and these two movies do not disappoint. Tim Burton's Batman movie was a game changer upon release, a darker, more serious reinvention of the Bat universe, and it wasn't just the funky Prince songs, gothic production design, and charismatic Bruce Wayne to thrill fans. It was also the Joker's dialogue. Most memorable is the line, Tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? What? Followed by another instantly quotable quip, Never rub another man's rhubarb. <laughs> another fun inclusion is when a flustered Joker bursts out, Needs an enema. Sheer perfection. With the Dark Knight's Joker being introduced and portrayed as more of a maniacal menace, there wasn't room for many humorous one liners, yet, the writers developed the script with some very iconic and memorable lines. For example, when he visits the injured Harvey Dent in the hospital, he manipulates him to further his strategy. I'm a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't know what to do with one if I caught it. You know, I just do things. This perfectly encapsulates Joker's chaotic yet brilliant mind at work and its lines like this and the already iconic Why so serious? And I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you stranger that work well in the context of the movie. Another chilling yet darkly humorous quote is when Joker is manipulating Detective Stevens in the interrogation room and after being reminded how many of the cop's friends he's killed, he mockingly mouths the word six. It's another example of an actor at the top of his game and proves that subtle moments like this make his performance so indelible. If you gotta go, go with a smile. <laughs> this face-off is getting right down to the bat wire. When Jack Nicholson stepped into the clown-sized shoes of the Joker, he did so by cleverly negotiating a deal for the production, which saw him take a cut of the movie's merchandise as well as appearance fee, and an agreement to shoot his scenes to meet his own schedule so he could attend Laker games. Not many actors could get away with these demands, but at the time Nicholson wasn't just any other actor. He was the perfect foil for Michael Keaton's Batman, and like Heath Ledger, he walks away with the movie. Me? What works so well for Nicholson is that he displays a great range of his acting ability in the role. Starting with Jake Napier as part of the Gotham City Mafia. You look fine. I didn't ask. Rising up the ranks, he shows his character's hunger for power, followed by a mixture of silliness, menace, anger, and also a shot at romance with Kim Basinger's Vicky Vale that really showcases the actor's diverse range and abilities. He excels in the role and didn't necessarily need to delve into the method book of acting to portray the character. It's also worth noting that he got top billing, and if you look at the Batman poster, it's Nicholson. Keaton, Batman. Nicholson, number one. 
Heath Ledger went pretty much full-on method for his performance of the Joker. In fact, he lived alone in a rented hotel room for a month, formulating the character's posture, voice, personality, and kept a diary in which he recorded the Joker's thoughts and feelings. He also channeled inspiration from both Batman the Killing Joke and Arkham Asylum, a serious house on serious earth, as well as the Kubrick classic, A Clockwork Orange. Ledger was also allowed to direct and shoot some of the videos that the Joker sends out as a warning to Gotham, with each take being different than the last. What's also most impressive are the various facial tics and twitches he developed with the character, such as the constant licking of his lips and a voice unlike anything that had come beforehand. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. His portrayal of the Joker is undeniably iconic, and although he doesn't quite display as much range as Nicholson does throughout Batman 1989, his take on the character is forever etched in the minds of moviegoers the world over. I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> So as the dust settles on another closely fought battle, both portrayals of the Joker are equally iconic in their own right, but this one came down to the fact that of the two actors, Ledger is the only one with an Oscar for his performance of the Joker. Well, not counting Joaquin Phoenix, but that's a face-off for another day. But don't let us have the final word. Tell us in the comments which Joker is your pick, Jack Nicholson or Heath Ledger. As always, Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh. <laughs>